Now that we understand the role that companies and sites play in the configuration of Sage ERPX3, it's time to dig a little bit deeper to understand the setup of the overall accounting structure within X3. And to do that, let's start by contrasting it against a traditional ERP system. In a traditional ERP system, we define a company first, and then we define the chart of accounts that we're using for that particular company. And in that chart of accounts would be GL accounts that are broken down by cost centers if we needed to track accounting information in that way. For example, let's say I'm using the GL account 6000 for rent, but I want to track rent by department. So for department 100, I would create a GL account called 6000-100. The 100 represents department 100. And I would do the same for department 200. I would create a GL account for 6000-200. And if I had 20 departments, I would continue setting up 20 individual GL accounts so that I could have each of those departments referenced. If I had other cost centers that I were tracking as well, I would need to set up individual GL accounts for each of those specific cost centers or combinations of cost centers as necessary. And then of course if we were tracking or supporting multiple companies, we would do the process all over again for another company. The setup of Sage ERP X3 works a little bit differently. The first thing we define are the names for the charts of accounts that we're using, or that we would want to use. These are just the names and they define the format for the account numbers that we're going to be defining. After we do that, we would define dimension types, which are basically our analytical pieces of information that we want to track. Very similar to the cost centers, but X3 gives you greater flexibility in recording these dimensions against transactions and reporting on these dimensions. And the dimensions are actually stored in separate tables from your financial transactions, of course. So we can set up dimensions for whatever cost centers or whatever types of analytical information we wanted to track. For example, a department, a region, a sales rep, perhaps projects, and perhaps sales groups. And after we do that, we would define ledgers. And we can have as many ledgers as we want. And the ledgers allow us to combine the specific chart of accounts that we want to use and the specific dimension types that we want to use in that particular ledger. For example, for ledger A, I'd like to use chart A with a department code and a region code for my dimensions. So I would specify that under ledger A. For ledger B, I would like to use chart B, but have different dimension types being recorded, perhaps a department, a sales rep, and a project. So I can specify that under my ledger B. And for ledger C, I may not want to track any analytical information, so I won't specify any dimensions. I just want to track a chart of accounts, and I'll use chart C for that. After I've defined my ledgers, the last step is to define what we call account core models in Sage ERP X3. That allows us to select the particular ledgers that we want to use for our accounting structure. So I can define my account core models. And let's say for model one, I want to use ledger A with the combination of chart of accounts A and the department dimension type and the region dimension type. So I can specify ledger A for my account core model, one. For my model two, I'd like to use ledger B with the separate chart of accounts, chart of accounts B, and a department dimension type, a sales rep dimension type, and a project dimension type. So I'll specify that. And finally, Remember that Sage ERP X3 supports multi-ledger accounting, which means for a single account core model, I can have multiple charts of accounts being used. For example, I want to use one chart of accounts to track analytical information, and I want to use a separate chart of accounts to track perhaps uh, IFRS reporting. So for my model three, I'd like to use ledger B, and I'd like to use ledger C as well so I can specify those on my account core model. 
when I'm setting up a company in Sage ERP X3, the first thing I define is the account core model. In this case, I'm going to use model one, and model one uses ledger A, which then specifies that I'm using chart of accounts A for company A, and I'm also using the department dimension type and the region dimension type. If I wanted to set up another company, again, all I would need to do would be to specify the account core model, and that would then specify or define the ledger with the chart of accounts and the dimensions that I'm using. Now the setup of X3 is very flexible in the sense that if I had multiple companies, I don't need to set up different charts of accounts. I could have a standardized chart of accounts that I could use for each company. In this case of company B here, I'm also using my account core model 1, which uses ledger A, which is also using chart of accounts A. So for both my company A and my company B in this setup here, I'm using the same chart of accounts. I'm tracking separate transactions, and I'm obviously recording information separately for each company, but I did not need to set up a separate chart of accounts for each company. I've got my same common chart of accounts that I'm using. And again, remember that Sage ERP X3 offers a multi-ledger environment as well. So in the case of company C, I may want to use account core model 3 so that I can have two separate charts of accounts. One, to track my department, my region, and my projects. And another one, for legal or government reporting. Giving me great flexibility in the accounting structure for my particular company. Now in terms of defining the accounting setup in X3, this is where it differs slightly from a traditional ERP system. We need to set up the names for our chart of accounts first, then we define our dimension types, which would be somewhat like our cost centers, then we define our ledgers, where we're selecting the chart of accounts and potentially the dimension types that we're using, putting them together. And then we can specify the ledgers that we're using within an account core model. And then we would be ready to define companies and sites. Now let's take a look at the setup of the accounting structure. I'm going to go into parameters organizational structure because this is where you define all of the elements for the account structure that's going to be used for a particular company. It's part of the organizational structure and is used as part of your core configuration in Sage ERP X3. To start out we'll go into the chart of accounts and all we're really defining here is a name and a code for the chart of accounts that we're using. We're not defining the actual GL accounts in this chart of accounts window. I'm merely giving it a code and defining my account format, whether it's fixed length or not, and the number of characters that it is. I can define my charts of accounts to have GL accounts that are alphanumeric, alpha only, or numeric only as necessary. One important thing to note here is, in addition to defining the name for the chart of accounts and the format, you're also defining the types of GL accounts that you can store in this chart of accounts. Good example of that would be the collective accounts that are defined here. A collective account in X3 refers to a control account. So for example, an accounts receivable or an accounts payable account. If you were tracking those in this particular chart of accounts or you wanted to define those types of GL accounts in this chart of accounts, you would make sure that the collective account checkbox is selected here. The next step would be to define default dimensions. And all we're doing here, again, is defining the name for the dimension types that we want to store. For example, department, region, territory, sales uh, rep, and so on. So you can see here, I'm giving it a code, 
entering a name, and again, I can define the format for the types of information that I'm storing in this particular dimension type. Putting my chart of accounts and my dimension type together would be done in the ledgers. So I can define as many ledgers as necessary. And you can see here I've given it a ledger code. I can choose the type of accounting that is going to be conducted here. One important thing to note is the only way to apply dimensions to a particular ledger would be to define it as allowing for analytical accounting. We can define some controls for whether we balance or not. Remember, X3 is a multi-ledger environment. If I'm tracking multiple ledgers in a given company, some ledgers may not need to balance. And that's why we have the ability to select whether the accounts will balance or not here. Most important thing under the ledger here would be to define the chart of accounts that we're using and the dimensions that we're using for this particular ledger as well. Notice you can specify up to nine dimensions here. After you define your ledgers that really brings together your chart of accounts and your dimensions, you're going to create what's called the account core model. And this is a step that people in different parts of the world that are used to having a single ledger environment only may not be familiar with. The account core model allows me to define multiple ledgers so that when I'm recording a transaction, I can record a transaction in several ledgers at once. I can have one set of books to track uh, gap reporting, a separate set of books to track IFRS reporting, and a separate set of books to track perhaps analytical information. Defining which charts of accounts I'm using and which dimensions I'm using, that's done at the ledger level. But the account core model allows me to reference the ledgers that I'm using. And you can see here that I can define up to 10 ledgers in any one account core model. I can have a ledger for general accounting and a separate ledger for analytical accounting and reporting. The system can be very flexible in how it allows you to record and report on transactions as necessary. You won't be able to circumvent core accounting rules, of course, but I can have different sets of books for different informational purposes. Now that we've got the chart of accounts named, we've got our dimension types named, we've put them together on ledgers, and then we've then put the ledger on the account core model, it's the account core model level that we assign to our companies. So in order for a company to be defined, we need to define the accounting structure first all the way up to an account core model because when we're defining a company, on the accounting tab, one of the mandatory fields is the account core model here. And just to recap, remember that account core model defines the ledger or ledgers that will be used for this company. Each ledger defines the chart of accounts that's going to be used and potentially defines the dimensions that will be used. So at the end of the day, the account core model dictates what charts of accounts and what dimensions I am able to use and track for my given company. Now the last thing to talk about here in accounting setup without going into too much detail would be the definitions of my GL accounts and my dimensions. And that's actually not done under parameters. That's done under common data. Within common data, under GL accounting tables, I can set up under general my GL accounts here. And you can see each chart of accounts would be identified at the top here to change to a different chart of accounts. I simply click on the plan button and I can choose a different chart of accounts to set up. And I can see the different GL accounts relating to this chart of accounts as well. Given the flexibility of the accounting structure within X3, it's important to note that again, as mentioned in the uh, presentation portion, in other ERP packages, you need to set up a different chart of accounts for each company.
with X3, because we're defining our chart of accounts at a very as, at a higher level before the company, I can define a single standard chart of accounts and use that same chart of accounts across multiple companies, saving me the hassle of having to recreate new charts of accounts all the time. We've discussed setting up the dimension types. So for example, we set up the name department in parameters, but the actual departments themselves are actually defined here under GL accounting tables, analytical, and dimensions here. So you can see I've got my dimension types referenced here. I'm currently on the department dimension and I have all my individual departments listed here. To choose a different dimension type to record values, I can click on dimension type and choose a different value here. And you can see that now I've selected a sales channel and I've got my values for my dimension type sales channel here. Again, remember, your GL accounts and your dimension values themselves are defined under common data because they're used in multiple areas of X3. Your actual setup of your accounting structure, your chart of accounts, your dimension types, your ledgers, and your account core models that you assign to a company, those are defined under the organizational structure. And that concludes the accounting setup discussion for Sage ERPX3.